hello dear students so in this class we shall discuss about the chapter biological oxidation so biological oxidation are the important uh, reactions in living cells so that is the oxidation reduction reactions are the main source of energy in the living organisms so the quantitative study of the energy transformations the quantitative study so the quantitative study of the energy transformations so the energy transformations so that occurs in the living organisms living organisms is uh, generally called as the bioenergetics bioenergetics so that means the amount of energy that Trans takes transformations in the living organisms is generally called as the bioenergetics. Okay, so the energy transformations, so the energy transformations takes place in three stages. Okay, so the first stage is the photosynthesis. photosynthesis so the in living organisms so the first stage in the transformation of energy is the photosynthesis so the photosynthesis as you studied in the lower classes so the plants absorb solar energy and convert it into food by the process called as the photosynthesis okay so the plants will absorb solar energy through the photosynthetic cells is chlorophyll and uh, utilize the chemical energy to synthesize the nutrients like carbohydrates proteins lipids etc okay so the photosynthesis is the first step in the transformation of energy so the second step so depending for depends animals so direct so the animals are the plants directly depends upon the plants so this animals use the plant nutrients and oxidize them during the respiration to produce chemical energy okay so <clears throat> the animals this is second stage of transformation of energy so these animals use the plant nutrients so plant nutrients and oxidize them so during the respiration so that will produce the chemical energy for the animals so the last stage in the transformation of energy is the chemical energy is utilized by the cells for the various cellular reactions so when the animals depending on the directly is indirectly on the plants so the animals depends for food directly or indirectly on the plants okay so the animals when they use the plant nutrients and oxidize them during the respiration to produce the chemical energy okay so this energy this chemical energy is utilized by the cells cells for various cellular reactions and the energy is returned return to the surroundings in a less useful form okay so largely as a heat so this energy transformations obeys the laws of thermodynamics okay so next let us consider a reaction okay so let us consider 
a reaction R P. Okay, so where R represents the reactants and the P represents the products. Represents the products. Okay, so the change in free energy delta G is given by delta G is equal to GP minus GR. Okay, so this delta G is change in free energy. Delta G is change in free energy so gp is the free energy of the products gp is the free energy of the products and gr is the free energy of the reactants free energy of the reactants okay so so this is the change in free energy equation so let us see depending upon the change in the free energy how we can classify these cellular reactions okay so first let us see the first type of reactions So they are called as the exergonic reactions. Exergonic reactions. So exergonic reactions. So that means if the free energy change of the reactants is greater than the free energy of the products okay then what happens the delta g will be negative okay so if delta g is negative means then the energy is released in such a reaction okay so the energy energy is released okay so such reactions are called as the exergonic reaction so that means the, re the biological reactions in which the energy is released are called as the exergonic reactions so in exergonic reactions what happens the free energy of the reactants will be greater than the free energy of the product so therefore the excess energy which is stored in the reactant will be get released during the chemical transformations okay when the reactants convert into products so the energy the excess energy present in the reactants will be liberated so if the energy is released in any reaction in any biochemical reaction so such reaction is called as the exergonic reactions okay so this reactions are thermodynamically favorable and also spontaneous so whenever the the free energy of the reactants is greater than the free energy of the products so then the react reactions are thermodynamically favorable so the reactions are thermodynamically favorable and the reactions are spontaneous so the reactions takes place on their own without any external aid the reactions will going to occur okay such reactions are called as the exergonic reactions so for example see here the atp molecule so hydrolysis of this atp molecule adenosine triphosphate molecule to adp a adenosine diphosphate with the formation of one inorganic phosphate so the change in free energy that is standard free energy change is minus 
kilo calories per mole kilo calories per mole so that means the delta g value is negative so that means the hydrolysis of the atps into adps is a thermodynamically favorable and also it is a spontaneous reaction okay so next let us see <coughs> one more type of reactions so they are called as the endergonic reactions endergonic reactions okay so in case of endergonic reactions the free energy of the reactants is less than the free energy of the products so when the free energy of the reactants is less than the free energy of the products so then the change in free energy will be positive positive okay so then the energy is absorbed in such a reaction so the reactions in which the free energy of the reactants is less than the free energy of the products for the reaction to proceed the reactants will absorb energy so endergonic reactions are those reactions in which the energy is absorbed okay so because the in case of endergonic reactions so the free energy of the reactants is less so therefore when the free energy is less the reactant the reactants do not undergo any chemical change for the reactants to undergo chemical change so the reactant should absorb energy so therefore in any reaction if the energy is absorbed such reactions are called as endergonic reactions okay so these reactions are thermodynamically unfavorable so thermodynamically they are unfavorable and also these reactions are non spontaneous so that means these reactions do not takes place on their own so for the reactions to takes place so the energy is needed okay so for example see here so the phosphorylation of adp molecule so adenosine diphosphate molecule so when it uh, accepts one inorganic phosphate so it converts into adenosine triphosphate plus h2o okay so the delta the standard free energy change for the reaction is plus 7.3 kilo calories per mole so that means this is plus 7.3 plus 7.3 so that means so 7.3 kilo calories per mole of energy is absorbed during the conversion of adp into atp molecules okay so this is endergonic reaction